Jeff, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your work, please? Sure. Well, I uh, teach undergraduate ESL right now and graduate applied linguistics at York University in Toronto. And uh, I've taught English language classes, a range of classes from LINK uh, sort of to EAP uh, and TESOL courses for probably about 15, 15 years in different contexts, different, different institutions. You've developed an interest in the flipped learning concept. Yeah, I mean, I studied uh, the use of technology um, in language teaching and learning in my, uh, in my graduate program. So in my master's and PhD programs, I sort of focused on those aspects and really to understand the affordances and limitations of online approaches in language teaching and learning and from a teacher development perspective too and, and how do we as teachers come to adopt and use these tools effectively in, uh, in language teaching. So can you, can, for those of us who need to know, we need to understand a little better what the flipped concept is, mm -hmm. can you describe it please? Yeah, the flipped uh, concept is the idea of building efficiency into classroom teaching and so it's ideally where as teachers we spend a lot of time explaining structures or concepts that we want our learners to know and it's moving that into the online space so we don't have to spend time just talking at students about these concepts and students can work with them uh, on their own time in their own space online and then we can use the classroom time to uh, to really allow students to uh, apply and work with these concepts in an interactive manner so I, ideally for language teaching it's quite uh, quite perfect because we can then spend more time in practice practicing language structures and language uses versus uh, telling students about them interesting do you see some other benefits as well yeah there are benefits certainly from from a, a learner's perspective and the fact that then I can take time to review these concepts whereas if I get them once in a class and the teacher is telling me I may miss part of it so it gives me time to process and re uh, focus or, or re-watch a section on some aspect, so it gives me time to um, work in a self-paced manner so uh, I can process it the way I need to and then uh, you know I can more fully understand the concept before coming and working with teachers and, and my peers and applying it. Um, so that's certainly one of the benefits from a learner perspective. From teacher's perspective it, it's managing the class more efficiently. It's building relationships with students because if you're working in the class applying these uh, concepts much more interactively then you're working with individual with groups of learners much more than if you're talking to the whole class um, about some concepts. So it does build in that, uh, build in that interactive dimension much more and uh, can allow students uh, and teachers to build that relationship and students to build closer relationships to their peers because they're interacting with them more in the classroom context and it just uh, builds in these efficiencies to the language learning space that I think is really beneficial and students can practice and get feedback on some of the uh, concepts and structures they're working with from teachers in the classroom space more because teachers have more time to give that feedback. Interesting. So you've actually, uh, well, we attended a session this morning where you described an evaluation of, of flipped learning actually being put to work in a community-based ESL program. Right. Um, what were some of the challenges you identified? Well, some of the challenges certainly was time for teachers and for students to really develop um, a familiarity with this flipped uh, learning approach. So for teachers, it's understanding what content really should I have students watch or, or process on their own sort of uh, in the online space and if for learners it's really building um, that autonomous learning strategy you know because I may not be used to learning online so how do I how do I manage my time effectively and work with that online learning in the online space and teachers is how then do I work effectively 
with learners that may cover some topics and others who may not have done all the work assigned in the classroom space. So how do I uh, actively work with this flip model? Because the pedagogy is a bit different and my roles are a bit different because I'm not as much a, I don't control the teaching the same way, so I'm more facilitating and uh, have to plan more interactive activities in the classroom space. We're really talking about an extension of blended learning to include mm -hmm. uh, flipped, really, and, and the transition of a teacher from a lecturer to a, a facilitator in the classroom. Thanks so much for your time today, Jeff. Thank you. Do you, want, do you want me to talk about the recommendations? Sure. Yes, yeah? sorry. Oh, Thanks. no problem. Yeah, so recommendations. In terms, of, uh, in terms of language teaching, I'd say from a, from teacher, for teachers, I mean the recommendation is really to understand uh, what potential content you can move online, how accessible is it to students with different digital literacies, what supports do you have to support those uh, students, students work online, um, you know, because often we don't have tech support given to us, so we often need to manage that ourselves, so we want to be strategic with moving certain content online, making it readily accessible, and then uh, ensuring that students will likely do that work to, in order to work with it actively in class. Um, and for students, it's really orienting them to autonomous learning, um, and, uh, and sort of setting up, you can set up peer mentoring models where students who have done work online have figured out this approach and can guide other students to take the burden off teachers to do that. So I mean there are multiple ways and really to try to work with other teachers too to see what their practices are and, uh, and figure out some best, best practice models uh, that you can, uh, you can work on collaboratively. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you.